Okay, what's going on guys? I'm Tommy from Galpin Auto Sports. Let's go do a shop walkthrough. No, it's SAC. Uh, S-A-A-C, SAC Mustang. So back when Carroll Shelby was with Dodge doing his stuff, uh, this, cor this company, S-A-A-C, got together with uh, Ford and What's going on guys? Uh, so you can see from the last clip that I walked up to this car, but I didn't give you guys too much more information. And I wanted to give you guys a detailed walkthrough of what this SAAC uh, Mustang uh, is and what it stands for. And SAAC stands for Shelby American Automotive Club. And that's the team that went together or went to Ford at the time and asked to build these Mustangs. At the time, Carroll Shelby Hello. was not a part or not working with Ford directly. He was over at Dodge helping them develop and test the Viper. So there was a there was a, a vacuum or a void or a gap there, if you would want to call it. Mind the gap. And uh, the enthusiast team, or especially the uh, Shelby American Club, definitely wanted to have uh, something to fill that void. So they approached Ford. They said, "Hey, this is our proposal. We want to take Mustangs and uh, soup them up, build them up, make them, you know, worthy of the Shelby name, and we want to build these things." So Ford gave their okay. They were first going to do a couple hundred units, I believe, but at the end of the day, they, they ended up doing 65, which this is number 50. And um, yeah, here it is. Let me walk you guys around and let me guys show you uh, show you all the fun tidbits about it. Don't let it ruin you. So the front bumper was been done a little bit differently. Uh, they went ahead and did uh, performance wheels and then coupled them with some Goodyear tires. What, wrapping onto the back. Again, the wheels, you got the rear trim and fascia looks a little bit different. You got the SAAC MK1 badging. And this thing is just super clean. There's a lot of details that this has that a regular you know, Mustang won't have. So everywhere from the door panel, the custom uh, upholstery and embroidery there, to the pocket, the uh, custom pocket they made there, to the door speaker pod, the leather all throughout here, center console. Uh, the dash has that dash plaque over there that designates it number 50. One of the things I love about this interior is look at this roll cage. So they installed the roll cage and then leather wrapped it and it's a very, very nicely done roll cage. Honestly, I, even some of the modern stuff I don't see done this well. But this looks beautiful. Such, such a properly done setup. Bada bing, bada boom. So this, you have her in all her glory. So she had an extra brace for suspension and handling, performance. So they got the regular V8 motor and they got the approval to put, I believe it's performance heads, the intake runner that's all performance, uh, like a performance intake runner on there, and just bump up the power. They put aftermarket headers. They were gonna be able to bump up performance. So in their mind, they were to, wanting to get, you know, as much power as they could performance out of this vehicle. So they went ahead and updated and upgraded. So this engine was used uh, through a lot of years in the Ford product line. Again, like the suspension you can see, so it had adjustable suspension, uh, front and rear. I know it's gonna be tough to kind of poke the camera in there. But the ride height was lowered versus the regular uh, Mustang and it was set up with sus adjustable suspension. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You have a high performance engine coupled in with a vehicle that uh, handles well and they improved the handling characteristics with uh, the additional chassis bracing, the lowering, the shocks, um, wider wheels and tires. It sets you up with a badass car right out of the box. Justin is working on another preload for Galpin Ford. We have a bunch of preloads uh, here at, uh, at Gas right now for Galpin Ford. So we're doing a set of 1552 wheels, uh, paired them up with some Mickey Thompson tires, some Baja bosses, right Justin? I like those shades, they're pretty cool. So yeah, so, hey Justin, did we level this guy out or is it uh, stock height? Uh, stock height. Stock height, okay, so stock height, so you could just run these tires, everything works with every uh, the stock suspension components, and we're good to go. These are our boys at 1552. If you guys need some wheels, you reach out to them. So these are the Traverse MXs. Bam, we good, you good? Let's go. Here we are, back in our collection. Um. Jesus, you're pretty loud in your shoes today. Jeez, These are you have like a ton of bricks in there. Dude, Sounds like broom, broom, broom. This is the roast fest for David. Hey, I'm not trying to roast you. This is our regular relationship. Don't let him think that I'm roasting him. He's just, I have nothing but love for you. Sure. 
We just finished up wrapping this Tesla Model Y. It was already blue, but the customer wanted it this shade of blue and wanted it to be matte. So you can kind of see that. It was a darker shade of blue, so you can see there, obviously different. But we finished it all up, and it's gonna go home tomorrow. And then over here, we have a Defender 110 that we uh, put Expel Stealth PPF on. And so this bed over here, we have in for the front end PPF. So the front end, you can see where the cutoff line is right there. So the front end, there's the film, has all been protected with paint protection film from Expel. So when the uh, owner's using it, especially it looks like he's been tracking it because when you look at the tires, those tires have been driven on a track. Especially these, look. That is 100% indicative of riding on a track. Um, so this car actually gets tracked. Um, and we are gonna protect the front end. As you can see, the guy has Recaro seats, or the client has Recaro seats, at least for the driver. Nicely put together, nicely sorted. Um, oh, let's go look, the M3's already blown apart. So over here we have a unicorn of the uh, late 80s, early 90s. We have a 1990 BMW M3 uh, chassis code E30 for the people who follow up with that. So this thing's beautiful. This thing was like a, it's like a poster car, wouldn't you say? For, for kids, I guess people who grew up in my generation. Um, beautiful car. As far as the performance aspects, it was very well, um, it was known for its performance aspect. As far as how much power they pulled out of that small motor, uh, it was very well known for like all the performance attributes that it had. It really did well for itself. So I'm gonna squeeze through here. The car came in, we're gonna have to address a few paint concerns and then it's gonna go back out to its owner. So the rear trunk lid, which is right there, had to get repaired. So these pieces are all fiberglass. So we are repairing that corner and that corner. The front bumper has seen better days. So the front bumper is going to need to get uh, completely disassembled and then painted. And the rest of the vehicle is going to get uh, paint correction. The one difficult thing is this vehicle has been ceramic coated. So now in order to correctly and uh, pretty much correctly paint correct it is we have to sand or remove all of the ceramic coating off. So then we can paint correct it and then we could buff it, polish it and get it back to what it's supposed to look like. Ceramic coatings are awesome, but when you have to fix an issue with ceramic coating, it would all have to get stripped in order to get a uniform look. Otherwise, you'll have high and low spots if you only do one area. Look at this thing. I don't know what, like, this is, I love this thing about BMWs. These E30s, no matter what they've been through, the leather still looks good. So I know it's like a vinyl they use, it's not actual leather, all right, that's what I assume. So that interior is 30, you know, plus years old. And look at how beautiful it is. And it's not just because this is an M3 with, you know, not that many miles. Even if you find a regular, you, you'd be hard pressed to find one that really has a trash interior unless the owner really tried to mess it up. But you got a five speed manual gearbox, you know, all original glass too. Oh, even the, even the windshield, usually they get swapped out as original. So um, this uh, dash gauge pod is gonna go onto the vehicle. This, these are all the components that you need. So for instance, for oil pressure, you're gonna have actual a sending unit to the oil. I think, well, this is the oil pressure sending unit, right? This one, this is the oil pressure. And then what, that's fuel. So this is fuel pressure, oil pressure. What else do you have, boost? And boost goes with the actual vacuum tube, right? Yeah, a mechanical. So there's a mechanical vacuum tube that goes out to the, um, uh, one of the T-taps to the vacuum system. Right pulls out of there and then you have your oil and your fuel and all the fun stuff. So these gauges will be operational once the customer is running. Because in a, in a supercharged vehicle especially, once you lose fuel pressure, the engine will probably go kaboom, right? Yes. So that's what you want to uh, uh, avoid. Factory supercharger, uh, factory throttle body, but he has the intake on it. Look at this big boy, Jesus. Uh, these are the coolant tanks. You have the radiator, you have the heat exchanger. These coolant tanks are pretty cool for Moro, so they're all billet. Um, you got the nice snake bling. You got the uh, battery cover that's out of billet too from Shelby. Style points. Style points. You get that? All right, so there you go. Look at this. You have a Ford Performance 
uh, sway bars. You have the Coney. Are the fronts adjustable too or only the rears? Sway bars? No, the front. The shocks are front rear adjustable? Yeah. Okay, so front and rear adjustable Coney uh, shocks with Ford Performance Springs. Correct. So Ford Performance Blue on the springs. You got springs in there, Coney adjustable shocks. You got your Ford Performance sway bar, new bushings, and a greasable uh, uh, fitting there so you can grease them. Shelby brakes, six pot calipers up front with a two piece rotor, drilled and slotted. And then again, these, these cooling ducts are what I spoke about yesterday. They get connected to the front bumper and they will channel cold air into the back of the brake, allowing it to cool down under track use. And now sliding under here, you have, um, so the trans cooler. So as the air is gonna come up, uh, you know, out throughout the bottom of the vehicle, this will divert it and hit the trans. So again, under track use, it stays cool. Uh, what else do we have? Moving on back here, ooh, you have a Watts link. So this is the Shelby Watts link with rear sway bars, billet end links. Very nicely done. I was telling Daniel, it's almost every one of these S197 chassis Mustangs I see has like the surface rust on these axles. I don't know why or whatever, like the material is made out of, which is very, very common. Um, yes, yeah, so you have the Coney adjustables. Again, you have the Ford uh, Performance Springs, uh, sway bar, pan hard bar. So the pan hard bar on a solid axle vehicle, when you lower it, or if it's a truck and you lift it, the axle will want to go left or right. Uh, it's not going to stay true to the body. I believe on these cases, when you lower it, the axle wants to poke that way more. Uh, so meaning when you look at the tire, the tire on one side will sit in, while on the other side, it sits out a little. So these pan hard bars, one of the uh, benefits of a pan hard bar is you can adjust it so you can realign the axle back under the vehicle correctly. And the second part of it is when you accelerate uh, uh, aggressively with these vehicles, the axle would want to kind of twist back this way. And this will help you uh, uh, mitigate that. It's not going to eliminate it because you still get some, but it's going to help it make it better. So that's this week's recap. We have a lot of stuff going on uh, up front. Specifically, we have a preloads for the Ford store that we're doing that we're going to have ready for sale soon. In the back, we have a 1990 E30 M3 that we're working on that I'm super pumped about myself because I just like that car. So if you guys want to see anything specific, comment below, let us know. If not, we'll see you later.